Don't judge a book by its cover is a very popular phrase that most people have heard and most likely have said to someone before when they said, I have no interest in said series. For whatever reason, whatever bias, whatever assumptions they have, you say, don't judge a book by its cover. It's a very popular phrase that very few people actually live by 24-7, and I would personally argue for very good reasons. If we tried everything that we had any sort of negative first impressions against, whether it's the poster, whether it's the name, a trailer, a synopsis, the first episode, whatever it may be, we would have to try everything and we would have no time for the things that we truly love. But it's not to say we shouldn't live by that phrase from time to time. There's always something that catches your eye every so often. For me, it's usually once or twice in an anime season where something gets popular that I firmly believed had no reason to be successful because we've seen it 12 times over, why do you need to see the same thing with the exact same coat of paint as we've already seen before? The Misfit of Demon King Academy was one of those shows where I looked at it, the name, how many times have we seen Magical Academy, throw a Demon King in there, a light novel adaptation, very powerful character, gets a harem, right? You just read the description, you look at the poster image, everything screams generic. I had my suspicions it would do pretty well in the anime season, but I didn't think it was going to blow up in any weird way, and if it did, I mean, we've seen that before. If they have cute enough character designs, if they have enough badass scenes, this shit's going to just sell Blu-rays left and right and be highly streamed. And that started to happen, but the thing that caught me off guard are the dedicated subscribers, the people who know what I like saying, Brandon, you gotta check this out. You have to have either a group of friends or just a group on the internet that you kind of trust their opinion because that's where you don't judge a book by its cover and you give it that honest to go shot. And holy shit am I glad I gave the Misfit of Demon King Academy a shot. It is one of the biggest surprises 2020 has delivered us at least a good surprise because 2020's had plenty of negative ones. The Misfit of Demon King Academy can be summed down to a very generic premise where you have a Demon King who was slain, he was resurrected 2,000 some odd years later, and now there's academies both on the hero side and the demon side. Both of these are trying to find the reincarnated hero and Demon King, and they will use them to do whatever they need to do. The thing is, the history that we see is that the Demon King actually gave his life for humans, but seemingly, the true Demon King, according to the rules of the world, has a different last name than our main character Anos does, and clearly Anos is the real Demon King, and clearly by his power, he is the Demon King of Tyranny. But what's interesting is how history has been changed since he's been slain and waiting to be resurrected. Even his people that he used to command, who are still alive and kicking, have no memories of him. So you have this actually kind of interesting premise where you can really twist what you think you know about Demon Kings of Tyranny. And it's not the first time we've seen a Demon King actually seemingly be a decent guy, but decent doesn't mean he doesn't go into full demonic rage, because he definitely does. What makes Demon King interesting is they honestly use a similar formula to what you can see in One Punch Man. And that's something that I really, really enjoy. One Punch Man's a formula that I thought I would hate as well. Judge a book by its cover. How can you have fun when someone one-shots an enemy? Where can you really have fun with that? But with amazing animation or amazing arts with the redesign for One Punch Man's manga, the amazing comedy and actually fascinating character stories, you can really have fun with that premise. Most of what you see with Anos is him almost one-shotting enemies or really putting up no fight. He has hardly any of his original power, but without even raising his pinky, he can seemingly deal with any obstacle. So how is that fun? The personality of Anos is admirable. Something that I don't really remember seeing much when it comes to like a Magic Academy anime where you have someone seemingly invoking confidence from everyone, male and females alike, hell, getting the teachers aboard on his harem train, is why do they really feel that way? Either I really have no love for the character and I'm like, he's despicable or she's despicable, or I feel like they're fine, but do they really deserve this much praise and attention? Anos is someone with every word in action invokes confidence. Even when no one's believing him as being the Demon King of Tyranny, he's inventing a spell, he's doing something insane. When people try to just obliterate him, he will kill them and then revive them, to then kill them again, to then revive them, 
and he does it over and over until they beg for forgiveness, basically. This man, he fits the Demon King role so well, but the thing is, is he doesn't rule with an iron fist. He rules with, honestly, a caring heart. People who go against him, people who hurt those around him, are going to fear the Demon King of Tyranny. But everyone else is going to experience Anos, the person who gave his life for humanity, and seemingly, that's been tossed out the window. It's such an intriguing premise, and by putting the emphasis on a really intriguing personality, you get something that just feels like you can explore this world in such a unique way. And that's what I love about it. So as he builds up his groups of friends, and you see males and females alike pretty much join the harem, it feels like, rather than it just feeling like they're joining a harem, or they're joining this character who you don't respect, you feel like you understand why people kind of like, almost like a magnet, attach to him because there's something about his personality that even though he seems like a lunatic, there's no way he's the Demon King, he doesn't even have the same last name. Are you saying our history's a lie? It kind of seems like rubbish. But I love how, even though the viewer knows that he is, you see where these characters are coming from and you also see their progression on why they changed their opinion on him. But the thing that ties the entire package together is the actual story. Light novel adaptations are so known for dragging shit out. And I mean dragging shit out. They'll take this content that should be three episodes four maybe, and stretch it for 12 episodes, and then they leave you off saying go read the source material, and maybe you get one more season, and you get maybe the second novel. Usually, that's not an issue if the source material's good. It's a pretty normal adaptation length, depending on the type of story. If there's a lot of dialogue, you might need more than that, but if it's an adventure show, an action, magic academy show, one novel, two novels, that's okay if the story's interesting. But so many of these authors, they get their big break for copying someone else's homework, where with this show, Every episode feels like five of most series in a similar coat of paint, and that's not because the pacing is bad. For the first time, I think I can remember for a show that had Demon King Academy sort of flair to it, the pacing was right. You have honestly three seasons worth of content that you typically see in a show like this. Every three to four episodes, I feel like we completed a novel, it feels like we completed an arc, and we get to see something new. And because of that, you actually get to explore a lot of these mysteries that would generally be either touched upon in the last two minutes of episode 12, or they would be touched upon arcs down the line, meaning seasons down the line if the anime got lucky enough. But here, from, oh, this character looks very suspicious, she's going to betray our boy, you then get to see what her true motivations were in return, building her into the companionship which then in return gives you more characterization between two sisters who you thought probably wouldn't get any characterizations because usually that gets touched upon around episode 9 and 10 and there's no room for really fleshing out their relationship where with here with Misha and Sasha you get a remarkable job with characterization. You have this mystery of has the hero been reborn and if so was he on the hero side on the demon side has he even been reborn and is their history also altered? Who is this fake imposter? Why is there someone trying to ruin Anos' name? And why is he taking up his face but changing the last name? All these mysteries get solved by episode 13. And you might say, well, if they all get solved, where do you go from here? Because they didn't waste our time, because they actually explored all these things, you're actually able to see possibilities for a season 2 and 3 that you never thought possible for a show in a similar coat of paint because if you got lucky, what we just saw with 13 episodes is what we would see maybe with 3 seasons. It's so remarkable to see a cast of characters as wide and interesting as this where you have these personalities that start out very stereotypical but honestly for the most part become fairly intriguing. There's some cliche elements like you have this cheerleader squad that literally is just a cheerleader squad for Anos but the way he uses them almost like a tool for having these little Little harmonies, these little songs and dances during the battles, they make for some really interesting background music and they take a cliche moment that could be friendship is magic and turn it into something a little funny with some badass music to back it or just really inspirational music. The sisters are both really intriguing and develop in a pretty fascinating way, honestly faster than I thought possible, and because they kind of just got that out of the way in an interesting and fairly speedy pace, we just get to see really interesting kind of bonding moments between them and even when it feels like they're just being flirtatious towards our boy and never feels like he's oblivious or he just is getting the support for no reason. He's the Demon King of Tyranny. 
even the viewer watching is like, I mean, if you're in their position, why wouldn't you basically follow this guy to the ends of the earth? Because look at how just much confidence he invokes in you you'll want to chase after him because he's just that good. The animation and art style is absolutely phenomenal. I am blown away not only just by how good it looks at a standard static level, character designs well polished, background and imagery is actually fairly intriguing, especially considering when you're used to just school settings, it's boring, it's bland, there's not a lot to it because you're walking down hallways and sitting in classrooms for most of it. Here, you're not really in those situations all that often, and when you are, it's intriguing enough, but for the most part, it's really gripping scenery you just feel like everything's changing non-stop and the constant evolution dispels and never feels like the animators are copy and pasting a piece of animation they did in a 3d program it feels like it's always different always unique the color palette the glow effects everything about it feels vibrant and just bombastic that it sucks you in and you just can't look away it's absolutely phenomenal how good the show looks and it's not to say that the studio wasn't capable of it they are very good at what they do especially when it comes to some sort of like magic series but there was no reason for it to look this good i really didn't think so but after experiencing 13 episodes of the misfit of demon king academy i can safely say this series did deserve it and i think actually did itself a lot of favors by looking as good as it did in the intro because by doing so it didn't make you really want to look away even if you didn't have that great of first impressions which for me i did but i think even if i wasn't that blown away by the first couple of episodes i would have continued just to see the visual spectacle and entertain Turn, I would have saw a really intriguing story. The voice actors, though, I have to say for the Japanese cast are phenomenal. I think the most important role was Anos, without a doubt in my mind. If it wasn't for Anos, amazing, just he almost feels carefree as if he's not really trying, but because he's not really trying and the way his actions are being perceived by others, it just invokes this level of cockiness and just calmness that makes you want to punch him. But then when you do try to punch him, he just reflects a ray back at you and somehow you punch yourself in the face and then in return you're basically bowing down and kissing his feet. This man is so cool, calm, and collected, and when he isn't, it is frightening beyond words. His actor went above and beyond to deliver one of the best performances of the past anime season, and it's absolutely remarkable to see how well he did with a character who I think would be very hard to portray, very similar to One Punch Man's protagonist, because if you don't capture the personality flawlessly, the show's gonna fall flat on its face and you're just gonna wanna go read the source material. The only issue that I could really say about the show overall is that honestly, there's like maybe you need of one more episode. We probably needed 14 episodes for what the show tried to do. For the most part, the pacing and like how much it was able to get through works in its favor, but towards the around episode 10 and 11 mark, you can see the need to kind of extend the plot before moving on to the final battle. But besides that, I really would have very little complaints with it, and it's worthy of everyone watching it, whether you love Magic Academy anime, whether you hate them. It's one of the shows that, honestly, I think is one of the biggest surprises of 2020 in the best possible way, because it delivers on seemingly complete story but wanting to see new territory because there's still more story to tell in every mystery you have that the anime lays out for you pretty much at the beginning of episode 1 gets touched upon by the end of episode 13 and you don't get to say that too often this was one of the biggest surprises for me and one that I definitely think more people need to check out even though it was an insanely popular show and I think is worthy of that don't judge a book by its cover because this show stunned me in more ways than one but if you did watch the misfit of demon king academy feel free to share your thoughts down below if you enjoyed, be sure to like to show your support and hit that subscribe button if you're happy and new around here. There's also my Patreon if you want to see early access on videos such as these. As well, I offer textless thumbnail art if that's something that tickles your fancy as well. So until next time, everyone, please take care. Have a good one.